Hey everybody, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, giving you a channel update because there's a lot of things going on right now on the YouTube platform that can dramatically change things. But before I start into that, I just wanted to say things are awesome. Like, things are really awesome. Uh, it has been wonderful to uh, serve in such an awesome community of people uh, and, and gamers who have huge hearts. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons over on Patreon who have been incredibly supportive. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of content creators online lately for Warhammer stuff that they're either asking for money or telling you that the world is going to end because of something we're going to talk about here in just a second. But this isn't one of those videos. I'm going to talk about COPPA, which is an American thing that uh, international viewers may not know much about, but it does affect you, so be careful. Um, talk about that, how it affects this channel, as well as future content that I'm excited to explore, and then just ask for feedback. And... Uh, those are the three beats that I really, really want to hit. So let's dive in. Starting off with the big one that really prompted this video, COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy and Protection, maybe those two Ps are reversed, Act. Uh, this was put into place in 1998. And uh, YouTube, or Google, I guess because the parent company, was recently found in violation of it. Uh, had to pay a couple, a couple million dollars uh, to settle. And part of that settlement was saying... Um, so basically the crux of it, if I had to back up a little bit, is that you can't target, advertise, and record data and all this stuff for children. Children being defined as 13 and under. And YouTube was found to be in violation of this because even though you can't set up a YouTube account until after you're 13, uh, they, they knew that basically parents were making accounts and letting their kids use them and they were targeting advertisements for children's content knowing this was going on. And so that was the problem. And so all of the... Things that you might see online regarding Kaba are reactions to YouTube's course correction to become lawful, <laughs> I guess you could say, uh, and operate within the boundaries of the law. Now, what I want to start off by saying is that I think that this is a, a prime example, like anything else when it comes to uh, government, <laughs> is a uh, great idea, poor execution. By that, I mean um, I am somebody who volunteers with kids. My wife does as well. And keeping kids safe online until they are old enough to even begin to understand what this world is like is, is of vital importance. More so than ever before in human history. Like every generation is more in, like, uh, not indoctrinated, that's not the word I want to use, but more like fused with online culture. And so it's super important. So it's one of those things I'm very cool with it. Even keeled, you're not going to see any panic on this channel. I don't care. Yeah, I do care, but I care because it's important uh, and that stuff. So we're going to start from that position of this is a good thing, but we need to be mindful of how it's implemented. The implementation of that, uh, to kind of segue into that, is uh, YouTube paid a bunch of money to the Federal Trade Commission and then said, here's the deal. Um, we're not going to be responsible for determining whether or not content is for kids. We can try, uh, but ultimately it's going to be on the backs of the content creators, meaning me in this scenario, to decide if their content's going to be for kids. They, their, their pitch being, you know your content better than anyone, YouTube content creator, uh, so we'll let you decide. The problem is, is if you decide wrong, saying, uh, so let's say I say my content is not for kids, and someone in the Federal Trade Commission says, no, it's clearly for kids. You're allowing targeted stuff to be targeted at kids. You could be demonetized, your channel turned off, or uh, in the extreme cases, up to a $42,000 fine. This has the YouTube community of content creators in an uproar. There's lots of videos about it. Um, most of them I find are doomsday e and negative because negativity drives clicks and advertising and things like that. Um, not for me. Here's what I mean. Um, if tomorrow morning I woke up and all my videos were demonetized, I would still keep making videos because I love this game. I didn't, um, I want to do it for as a business, but I also understand that ad revenue is a very fickle thing when it comes to YouTube. And so I, that's why I am so grateful for all my patrons over on Patreon. Every single month, I am incredibly humbled by their generosity and input uh, and just their willingness to share because stuff like this happens, right? Stuff like this does happen. YouTube changes. Uh, it's one platform. And so... Um, I'm not freaking out about the COPPA changes. Just want to let you know that if I, so basically I have decided to make all my videos not for children. They're not my target. 
Um, these kits all have a little 12 and up um, sticker on them. Uh, you know, the content of the books does, you know, we're talking about Slanesh and that kind of stuff. It does get kind of out there. It's not for children, children. My target demographic is, to be super frank, white men from 25 to 35 in the UK, US, and Australia, right? By Google Analytics, that is the overwhelming amount of my viewers. Um, and so I don't, you know, I don't feel like my videos target kids. So I did that for the entire channel, not for kids. So I can make ad revenue, that kind of stuff. The issue is if somebody in the FTC looks at my channel, having no information about Warhammer, can be like, oh, it's fantasy art. He's talking about elves and dwarves and that kind of stuff. Clearly, this would be at least be interesting to children. And so they could shut me down. So to do this, basically, my next steps are I'm going to keep making content absolutely fearlessly. However, this weekend... I am going to take some time to re-download all of my videos. I have some backed up, but not the earlier lore series ones. And I'm going to actually start republishing those videos, at least the audio files for them, on my podcast feed, which I will leave in the link down below. Previously, I was saving this for While You're Reforging to be like a very specific podcast feed. Um, the schedule for that show got super interrupted by Nova and a few cancellations of guests, and so I just kind of languished for a little bit. But I'm actually going to change the art and the, the feed name and, and reappropriate it to be 2 Plus Tough Podcast. And so the first week, for example, this is a hypothetical, it'll be like Nurgle Weekend. So I will put up all the Maggotkin Week videos up there, the audio format for you. And we'll just, we'll just move everything over there. So this way I have all of the hard work that I've put into the channel saved uh, somewhere, you know, offline, off YouTube. And then I can redistribute that as I need to. As I promised when I started the Patreon, nothing is behind a paywall. It will all be free. No charges, nothing like that. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Just to let you know, I'm not super worried about getting sued for $42,000. I already owe the government a bunch of money for student loans, so they can just put that on my tab. I'm joking, of course, but I'm honestly not too concerned about that one. It's more the demonetization and possibly losing the content that I've done. And so I'm taking the steps to take care of that. If there are any changes, uh, I will let you know. If, for example, they do find that my children does appeal to my content appeals to children, sorry, um, stuff like comments will be turned off. Uh, you won't be able to ring the little bell icon whenever I release new content, little things like that. And so if those changes do happen, it's a big if. I will let you know about them in a dedicated video. But above all, I'm just gonna say, not worry about it, content's still coming, I'm not super scared. And a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon who have allowed me to be in a life position where even if the ad revenue, which accounts for half of my income from all of this channel stuff, uh, goes away, I can still be supported. That was the whole point of saving up and doing the, um, the asking people to donate that's why we have this home, like this apartment where I have space to do an entire studio room, that kind of stuff. So huge thank you to y'all. Um, moving into more interesting stuff regarding actual Warhammer content, I want to talk about the content ideas that I have for the channel going forward. As of course, you can expect a whole bunch of Age of Sigmar lore videos. I am drowning in content ideas right now because we've had so many battle tomes come out. We've had, uh, what? five uh, in very recent time we have slaves to darkness on the way very soon uh i have about four or five more videos i want to do for cities of sigmar four more for war clans and several more for osiarch bone reapers and i don't even know what's going to be happening with uh slaves to darkness i'm super excited for that one as many of you would know so lore is going to continue but i also have some projects that i'm really excited to add to my roster see here's the thing i um I thought that when I moved in here, I was going to have space to do like full battle reports, like mega negative battle reports with six by four table and everything. It's just tighter than what I thought uh, for a few reasons that I won't go into, but uh, it just isn't super conducive as a space. However, I was able to do skirmish game battle reports with exceptional ease, and I've had huge amounts of positive feedback about them. And so um, the plan is to do just that. So I'm going to be diving deep into Warcry. If you've been following my live streams, you know that I've been tearing through the terrain for Warcry in order to get 
everything ready the beasts and the twist cards you know all that stuff that i need to be able to actually play every possibility of Warcry ready we're launching a narrative campaign where some games i'll be playing with other people some games that are very narrative heavy i'll be doing in-house just me against myself i still keep rolling the dice i uh, got some great feedback regarding my first narrative battle report and we're going to improve it for one more one-off game when I get that feedback, collect it, and then go into the campaign. So I'm very excited about all of that. Warcry is going to be a huge staple of this channel because there's not a lot of content creators who just focus on it. And I think it's an incredible game that I super enjoy, uh, and I want to focus on it. Now, in addition to that, because I can do skirmish games here, and I happen to really enjoy them, I went out and treated myself, uh, well, I only treat myself, I picked up, the uh, the Dark Uprising kit for Necromunda, and I will be doing that as well. I will be doing it on the same size table as uh, Warcry, which is the same size as Kill Team, so a little bit smaller than a typical uh, Necromunda table. So it'll be close quarters, but that's not really a huge issue. Uh, there's still It's still a long way, so like longer range weapons can still have a chance and that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm very excited because uh, doing Necromunda stuff will kind of get me into 40k which is you know if i want to do this full time there's just a reality of there is a maximum amount of age of sigmar players and so i want to kind of expand into other games 40k is an obvious one but also eventually someday um other game companies as well getting kind of into the game industry type thing but that's way down the road um right now 40k uh, is is teeming with lore channels and that kind of stuff, but there's not a whole lot for Necromunda, and it is an extremely popular game because, uh, just like Warcry, it leans so heavily into storytelling and narrative, uh, where you can craft these very cinematic moments uh, between a small group of soldiers and that kind of stuff. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, it's not ever going to overtake Age of Sigmar content whenever a battle tome drops. I'll stop everything. We're going to cover that because people get very invested in their factions. Um, but yeah, whenever there's there's time and there's freedom, I will be going ahead and doing that. I just think skirmish games are like cool as all heck. In addition to all that, I do have a new content schedule to make sure, quite frankly, I don't get burned out. About three weeks ago, I hit a point where I just hit a wall where all these battle tomes are coming out. And I was just like, I am so tired of this, uh, of just like having my face in a book constantly trying to make notes for shows. And so I decided to make a, uh, a content schedule to kind of keep myself sane and make this very doable long term. And so basically the way it'll work is that on Monday, there's always going to be a lore video, uh, Age of Sigmar lore specifically. Tuesday, I'm going to release my weekly, hopefully, um, Upon the Forge, which is my hobby progress thing because I paint so much per week. It seems silly not to, to talk about it. So it'll be that. Wednesday will be another lore video because this is a lore focused channel. Thursday is my wild card. I can do whatever I want. It could be a lore video, could be, I don't know, a review of a product or talking about stuff. It doesn't matter. Whatever. And then Friday, as always, about midday, 1130 my time, Pacific Standard Time, I do a live stream to catch my folks over in Europe. Of course, there's live streams throughout the week uh, to catch folks in the U.S. as they get off work. So that is the content schedule I have going forward. Uh, just to kind of wrap, keep my head sane so you know, I have to know exactly what I have to write throughout the weeks instead of just shotgunning content uh, into the ether. <laughs> and uh, I can do this to kind of keep my motivation up. Beyond that, I just wanted to ask everyone what you wanted from the channel. So, of course, lore videos. Of course. I have a huge stockpile of content, you know, in the past. Go check out the playlists. The playlists need to be cleaned up a little bit in terms of what comes first and that kind of thing. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think things are going really well in the Age of Sigmar content way. Let me know your thoughts about 40k content, Necromunda, Warcry, what you'd like. Actually, the Warcry one is very interesting. Let me know what you would like to know about Warcry in terms of if you want like tutorials or if you want um, faction reviews and that kind of stuff. Whatever, just let me know. There's not a ton of lore for the game per se, as much as I hoped there would be when it was coming out. But um, I'll see what I can do. But most of all, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for kind of like joining me on this journey uh, through YouTube and Age of Sigmar and all kinds of stuff. It's just been you know, a wild ride. I got to meet some incredibly cool people and I uh, hope to keep doing so. So assuming that no massive demonetization or, you know, government fee or whatever happens, I do plan on going to 
uh, Adepticon uh, pretty soon. I made that decision with a few friends of mine. Uh, I won't speak for them because that's their announcement to make. But uh, for me, I hope to go to Adepticon. Assuming I can get some tickets and that kind of stuff lined up. And then um, if I'm really feeling crazy, go back to Nova again, which I would love to do. Nova was an absolute blast. And so uh, I hope to, I don't know, see more of you, see the world, and uh, just get to keep riding this train because I'm having an absolute blast. Um, I'm feeling refreshed and uh, I'm just enjoying every ounce of it. Thank you so much to everyone who's been so kind in the comments lately uh, about a myriad of things. Uh, and my patrons over on Patreon have always been incredibly, incredibly uh, just encouraging, not just with their financial money, but just when I speak to folks like on our Discord, uh, which you can find the link below, just very positive feedback and encouraging. Uh, and it means a lot because right now I'm talking to a camera. You know, I'm not talking to the people who matter most, right? Like, it, I, I don't feel like I have a human connection, but when people do reach out and message uh, and leave comments and views and that kind of stuff, it's incredibly encouraging. And so it reminds me, like, I'm talking to a person, <laughs> not just this little camera right there. So I want to thank you all for all of the encouragement and the positivity. Again, look forward to a whole bunch more content. This week's going to be a little bit dry simply because I'm doing all of that downloading and scheduling and that kind of stuff, the very tedious data entry stuff to make sure all my content is safe uh, and, and backed up and that kind of thing and get the podcast going. Uh, but uh, when I have everything set, I'll announce it all again and you can uh, start following me there because sometimes for folks that's just easier for them. So. Thank you so much for watching this long, long video. I apologize for the length of it. If you have questions about um, content that I'm doing, uh, you know, COPPA and, and my views on that, you can go ahead and ask them down below. Um, and I'll go ahead and respond to them. I'll make a note to really pay attention to this video. Thank you again, and happy wargaming.